and welcome to MXM Live. Delighted to have here with us an industry senior, Subhash Kamath. Last Thursday, Subhash was unanimously elected chairman of the Advertising Standards Council of India. He is also CEO for BBH and Publicis Worldwide, which is part of the Publicis Group. Uh, before I get into the interview, a disclosure, I'm a part of the Consumers Complaints Council of, the, of ASCII, and, uh, but that I must tell you is purely coincidental. A little about Subhash. Subhash has been in the business for, of building brands for 32 years. 22 years uh, of, of these, 22 of these have been in top positions. Uh, he has been with agencies like Ogilvy, Trika Gray, Ambience, Publicis, and Bates 141. He was one of the founding managing partners of BBH India in 2009 and currently serves as the CEO for BBH and Publicis Worldwide, which was integrated recently. He is passionate about brand strategy and creativity and loves to involve himself in his clients' businesses. Uh, Subhash has been an active member of the Ad Club in the past and has served on the board of governors of ASCII since 2010. He plays in a rock band called Wanted Yesterday and I have heard him and he is exceedingly good and is crazy about cricket, single malls and good food. Subhash, since you are into uh, uh, food so much and so am I as it's evident, let's talk in, uh, in, in foodies. Welcome to Excel Live, uh, Subhash. Pleasure, uh, pleasure to be here. Charge at the unified BBH and Publicis Worldwide as recently as July 2020, and now uh, chair of ASCII. Given that these are interesting and tough times for a creative agency network with the uh, COVID 19 led lockdown, let's slow down. And given that there's now a central consumer protection authority and a, a very active uh, uh, government looking at at the consumer movement, how's your plate looking? My plate is looking like a, a, a thali, unlimited thali right now, with lots of different, different, different uh, dishes uh, and no space to take on any more. But somehow, always some extra achar or something always falls in. So, so is it uh, spicy? Is it you know tangy? Is it sweet? Yes, I think I think it's it's quite spicy, but I think it's also there are some sweet and there's some there's some uh, some some bland stuff, some sweet stuff, some spicy stuff. It's quite a smorgasbord as they call it. So, so let's look at the spicy stuff, or let's look at whatever uh, you know. Clearly, these are uh, these are interesting times, if I might say, for ASCII because uh, the consumer movement has been at at a new high. Social media is very active. Whenever there is any uh, new ad in the good old days, uh, there, were, there were murmurs of discontent or, or uh, you know, uh, a negativity against an ad was, was different. But now it, is, it has grown to enormous pop, you know, proportions. Uh, how, how does an ASCII uh, operate in that kind of an environment? Look, I think, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, the way things have changed and evolved in the last five years, I would say, would have been at double the amount of change than it was in the 10 years before that. And that was almost double the amount of change in the 10 years before that. In the last 32 years that I've been in the business, uh, I would say the last 10 years have been the most radical amount of change, right? Uh, and, and, and a large part of that has got to do with the digital revolution that's, that's taken over. Uh, what has happened, and, and, and while COVID is a huge impact for this particular year uh, as an industry, uh, I would imagine that, at least I'm optimistic, that one day that shall pass, right? And there is going to be a world beyond COVID. Uh, to me, even post-COVID, I think digital is here to stay in a big way. It already accounts for about 30% of ad spends, uh, is, is one of the recent numbers that I saw. And it's growing much faster, right? And there was yesterday somebody commented that in maybe three years time, it may even overtake, digital spends may overtake even television spends in this country, right? So these are all the kind of changes that we're all grappling with. And what has happened because of the digital uh, world is that the way brands are continuing to create their messaging and the way those me that messaging is being consumed, the way consumer engagement programs are being created online and the way that is being used to interact with the consumer, a lot of that is very, very different from the traditional world of television or print advertising as it used to be. Which means that even ASCII's processes needs to evolve and start keeping in times 
with this, right? So we've done a recent, uh, relatively recent uh, partnership with TAMS where we've, uh, even apart from television and print that we used to do, are now monitoring almost 3,000 websites and uh, platforms where digital advertising, et cetera, is being uh, used. Uh, we need to, of course, we're right now focusing on three uh, categories, which were about 75% of the complaints we got last year, which is food and beverages, health and hygiene, and education. These are the first three categories that we've launched. But over a period of time, I'm sure we'll be adding more and more categories like automotive and things like that in this monitoring as well. Uh, so that's one thing. We need to create a larger digital footprint of overview as well as depth as we go along. And this is not going to be something that's going to happen overnight. It's going to be continuously improving and evolving as we go past. The second thing is also in terms of our internal processes at ASCII, right? We've got a extremely robust and I would say fair process of educating on ads. There is the integrity of the CCC that is there. When a complaint comes in to us, the advertiser who's a member is obviously would be given the first chance to present their case against the complaint. What would they feel? both of which is then given to the CCC, you would know as you've been on it, uh, which then debates, adjudicates whether the complaint should be upheld or not, or whether any corrective measures need to be taken. Even after that, if the, uh, uh, the, 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 the advertisers wants to go for a higher appeal, even that is made available through an independent expert panel. Now, all of this is, is a very fair process and it's it's there's a lot of due diligence that goes into this process but by the sheer detailing of it it does take a bit of time right uh, to to uh, one of the things i want to look at is when we talk digital how can technology help us resolve these things and make it a faster response cycle I, as I'm, well i'm going to sorry uh, you know interrupt you and uh, there are a few questions which come in one is that uh, given the way the advertising is on digital and the, uh, uh, the the number of websites that exist in uh, in 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 the in the, in the Indian uh, 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 media space, uh, it's going to be a challenge for you to keep track of track of all advertising and 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 the fact is that not all the uh, media players are ASCII members, uh, not all the advertisers are ASCII members. So in that sense, it is going to be not very easy to police them. Agreed, agreed. But I think our role again is not about policing as much as self-regulation. Uh, the more members that we can continue to attract every year to bring into our fold, because all the members sign to a certain code of conduct, right? That's when they become the members of ASCII. They have to believe in that code. And, and that aspect of, of, of getting in more members every year will continue, right? Uh, but yes, you're absolutely right. The challenge is there that how how many can you monitor? How many can you reach out to? Even, even from an advertising messaging perspective, in the television world, it took about a month to produce a commercial, then go on air, then it is seen on air, somebody the complaints to it, process is made, complaint is uh, ruled upon. Whatever corrective measures have to be taken by the advertiser will then get taken and the film may go on air again. In this case, in the digital world, your messaging can change in three days, Shah. So today I put out a messaging within Friday, I can, next Friday, I can change it twice. Now, how do you monitor that? How do you capture that, right? So these are real challenges. I mean, that's the way the digital world is. But all I'm saying is that, look, we have evolved ASCII for the last 35 years has been at it. And a lot has changed and a lot of processes and policies have evolved, right? And that will continue to, uh, will continue to create more outreach We'll continue to uh, focus on creating more awareness and uh, look at how our processes can become faster and speedier. Now, that's an evolutionary process, I would say. As, as somebody who's tracking the space, there's no doubt that ASCII as a self-regulatory body is a huge success in the entire media ecosystem. There are other self-regulatory bodies also which exist, but uh, there's also a, a press council which is largely ineffective. Uh, why is it that, and you, since you've been part of the, uh, the Board of Governors uh, for a decade now, how is it that uh, you know, the government did not factor in ASCII when it was setting up the Consumer Protection Act, they set up the CCPA, 
and uh, clearly ascii is not part of the entire uh, uh, entire you know scheme of things as far as the government is concerned when when it's clearly there and it's a success look we we've always maintained that we would like to partner with the government right in the past we have partnered with the ministry of ayush with ministry of broadcasting uh, mip we we even had a five year uh, mou with doka uh, department of consumer affairs so so uh, working with the government is a is absolutely part of our mandate and that's what we would like to do the ccp has just been formed i don't see a conflict between the ccca guidelines and ascii guidelines we take a look at the guidelines they are pretty much very very similar to what ascii has been working on for so many years we have the processes in place we have the consumer address systems in place we would love to offer that to the ccpa to to work alongside with them in collaboration and partnership it has just been formed uh, we will be reaching out to them let time tell how we can work together or not but i don't see any conflict the other thing i wanted to see anywhere in the world if you look at the us if you look at uk if you look at australia very established markets each of them have got a government regulator right the the, the us has got the ftc uh, the uk has got uh, the oft the office of fair trading the australia has the australian competition and consumer commission accc but in each of these countries also the industry has very strong and successful self regulatory bodies how are they coexist and how are they working together it's very simple the objectives of both are the same except that the guidelines do not do not specifically say that hey if you have a complaint first go to ascii and not then yet. come to us not not yet not yet but if you look at the cable act for example which the mib has been following uh, any commercial that uh, does not prescribe to ascii guidelines will not be allowed to air and that's part of the cable act and the ministry of uh, information and broadcasting has always been referring those complaints to us in the similar spirit we would love to co- we would love to uh, partner with the ccpa as well because we have the process in place we have the expertise and the experience and that's going to be our offer to them let's see how it goes it's just been formed you know, this is this is i i know it's an unfair question to ask you but since we are discussing this do you think it was perhaps uh, you know a lack of lobbying with the government that ensured that you know that this did not happen lobbying uh, i i no i don't think it's a question of lobbying like i said it's about aligning of objectives and in my mind the objectives are the same there are only two objectives one is protection of consumer rights which is what even we believe in and the second is therefore responsible advertising and marketing which is also what we stand for as long as our objectives are aligned there's no reason why we can't work together the other thing is that the current ccpa guidelines seem to be focused on one of the chapters of the advertising ascii code which is misleading advertising that's what ccpa is focused on admittedly that's the biggest section there's no doubt about it in terms of complaints but the ascii code is the framework is much broader there are two three other codes which come into play chapters pertaining to offensiveness pertaining to harmfulness or to pertaining to unfairness and competition which is also something that we all oversee so our, our our framework is broader than what the ccpa thing is which is focused on misleading having said that again that's the very important thing and we would want to partner with with the ccpa uh fine let's move let's move on my 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 own view and that's an industry view is perhaps the ascii should have lobbied a little better with the government to 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 be factored in uh, well but i'm sure uh, with with you know good offices of everybody that Uh, constitutes as key this will be a thing of the past but let's let's moving on uh one of the one of the issues which is there is that not all large advertisers not all the big advertisers are members of uh, of the uh, ASCII now is that is that something that you that is there on your agenda in terms of ensuring that they are all there ensuring that they you know participate in the in the entire movement of uh, self regulation that's a ongoing process if you ask me every year we add some num- members every year we reach out to a lot of the big members uh that's an ongoing thing i i don't think that challenge changes uh thankfully we have a large number of large advertisers already on our uh, member roles uh a lot of the big marketers are already there some aren't admittedly uh, but reaching out to them trying to bring them in is going to be part of the process we did that last year with the year before that and we're going to do it next year as well 
But I'm not going to name those advertisers. But you know, the fact of the matter is that some of the biggest players in the business are not uh, uh, are not members of ASCII, and as a result of which, somewhere in the entire self-regulation process, they can always come back and say, you know, hey, we aren't we aren't really answerable to uh, uh, to to your diktat, and the diktat is not really in the realm of something which is a major will be under the purview of the government as, as such. Some of some of the large advertisers are not. Many of the large advertisers are in. Right. And therefore, we will be reaching out. Now, if somebody feels that they do not see the value of being a member of ASCII, it is our job to convince them and show them the light. And that is a that is a effort that we will continue to do. Right? I mean, if somebody says, no, I'd rather deal with only the CCPA, fine, that's their call. But I think the whole idea of self-regulation is this is not a police state. It's about us drawing a line saying this is a line we won't cross. Right. right. And to me, that 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 is that is the most important aspect of of self-regulation. You know, I was referring to it, just because there is the police in society to protect and punish doesn't mean we stop teaching our children what is the difference between good and bad and not to go into crime, isn't it? Just because we have the police, does that stop our value system and our and our effort? It doesn't. It's the same. It's the same thing. I think as a responsibility from a industry, marketing and advertising perspective, we have, and I've always said this phrase, with great creative power comes great responsibility. We have the persuasive power to woo millions of people to buy a particular soap or a shampoo or any brand. And that power comes with a responsibility. We have to be conscious of what is fair, what is honest, what is undue influence, Issues like how women are depicted, issues like how children are used in advertising, unfairness in competition. These are all racism issues, color of skin issues. These are all things that we have to draw a line in front of us ourselves as responsible advertisers. There is a line that I personally will not cross. And that's an ethical and a moral thing. That is what self-regulation is about. That is what we are propagating. And that has to be seen in the context of progressive and evolving society. What may have been acceptable 10 years ago is not acceptable today. And we have to be cognizant of that. It's not just about finding a culprit and punishing it. So you use the example of the police. The fact of the matter is the crime keeps increasing despite the existence of the police. But, but moving on, you, know, you mentioned, in, and, and once again, uh, following up on, on, on your first response, you mentioned about digital and, and the fact that digital, uh, you're going to be checking on uh, two or 3,000 digital uh, platforms henceforth. But digital itself has moved on, uh, has transformed itself. It's not just your display ads or your mailer, etc. You have uh, uh, influencers, you have branded content, you have page content on our, uh, on our, uh, on our websites, in our newspapers, in our television, there's political advertising, and uh, uh, and, and so on and so forth. How are, how is ASCII going to ensure that those are uh, kept under check? So I, I I think again that's an evolving uh, issue. So it really comes to the definition of advertising itself, isn't it? At the time when ASCII was formed 35 years ago, the definition of advertising was different, right? It was paid by brands in certain mediums to uh, create certain narratives or storytelling on, on certain messages, right? Whether it was a television commercial, whether it was a print ad or an outdoor medium, etc. In the digital world, like you rightly said, it's not just about the display ads. Today, a lot of things are evolving. Advertising and content, the lines are starting to blur. You know, what is content and what is paid for advertising? And these are something that will continue to get evolved and continue to be discussed. Should that come under a gambit or not? Because all this while, we have stayed away from content that a publisher publishes, right? Uh, because that is uh, not part of the ASCII mandate. We can only opine on the advertising of that uh, brand. We can't opine on the content of that brand, which goes on to like what, what a news channel decides, the slant, editorial slant, etc. doesn't come under our, our, our mandate. But in the digital world, there is completely, I agree with you, there are areas where branded uh, communication is being interwoven with content and consumers are consuming it as content, right? So does that come under ASCII purview? These are questions which 
answers will evolve and slowly come out. I don't have a specific answer to give you right now saying, yeah, it should. But I can tell you, I don't think we've ever, uh, on, on, the, on one of the points that you raised, uh, we have never in the past uh, uh, attempted to look at political advertising. And I don't think in the near future we intend to do that either. I don't think we want to be uh, looking at that. We, our members are people who have signed a certain code of conduct. And we would prefer to focus on those people who's paid for brand advertising is what is under purview. Just for the sake of argument or, or discussion, you know, uh, if you look at the adex, there are times of the year when government and political advertising perhaps dominates the adex, right? In terms of the amount of spend that is there. So while I agree with you that, you know, ASCII doesn't include political advertising and perhaps there's, uh, there's fair reason for it, but, uh, Shouldn't it technically be also under the purview of of an ASCII because an ad is an ad is an ad, whether it's of the government or whether it's of a of a of an FMCG major? Again, I refer you to the basic concept of self-regulation. It's not just about a police body; it's about self-regulation. Members of ASCII sign a certain code of conduct, subscribe to a certain code of conduct, agree to work within certain prescribed guidelines. That is what self-regulation is about. Political parties are not members of ASCII and they don't necessarily follow our guidelines. They follow perhaps their own codes. And therefore, there needs to be some other body that will have to look at political advertising. It is not part of a purview. And I don't think that's going to change in the years to come. Yeah, but I'm just going to make one small observation. There are, you know, in the ASCII uh, uh, complaints that come in, you do accept complaints against non-advertisers also. Or non-members also, sorry, non-members. We do, provided that is branded advertising. Advertising for brands and not political parties. That's a policy issue, so. Right. Uh, the other, the other uh, uh, factor that is there, and one of the, one of the uh, uh, maybe incorrect to say charges, but one of the, one of the observations that are, that are there about ASCII is that typically the complaints process is such that you know, when the complaint is made, it is processed while there is a fast tracking mechanism that exists. But in many cases, uh, the, the burst in the first two, three days of advertising is enough to create the damage. And by the time ASCII reacts, uh, uh, the damage is done. Now, you know, you would obviously know this as, as, a, as a sentiment that exists amongst advertisers that, hey, let's do it for the first two, three days ensure that we uh, go in for the kill and then let ASCII decide. Now, is that something that you can, you can perhaps work on? Is, it, is there a, a way to check that? It's a good question. It's, it's a question of balance, really, uh, Patimna, because like I said, the ASCII process is a very robust and a fair and a transparent one, which requires a lot of due diligence. Can that be done faster using technology today, for example? Maybe that's what I'm exploring. That's one of my key areas of focus. How can we improve and make it faster in terms of uh, turnaround times, right? But in doing things faster, we shouldn't do things less right. You know, that's the balance. You do need the robustness of the process. You do need the integrity of the process. You cannot damage that. But at the same time, can that be done faster is what I can explore, right? Uh, if, if in, in society today, to, if you go to a court for anything, do you think, and there's a lot of complaints about courts as well, right? That sometimes a case can go on for 10 years or something like that, right? Now maybe there are the other issues there, but uh, do you think a high court can very quickly rule without doing its due diligence on, in, on any case, criminal or otherwise? You can't. You have to hear the both sides story. You have to be able to have an intellectually honest discussion with mature minds on it before you arrive at a ruling. Even in, even in the law courts, why does sometimes the jury take so many hours to arrive at a ruling? Because not all cases are clear cut. There are gray areas that need to get negotiated and discussed. And this is very, very important. You know, but yeah, I mean, using technology can we, can we make a response times faster? Can we uh, uh, come back to the advertiser much quicker than we currently are. I think that's what's going to be our uh, process. But in no way would I want to 
disturb the integrity of the process because that has to be kept sacrosanct can we how do we make it faster is you know for example if right now it takes 25 days can we make it in 15 days how do we do that i want to ask you a personal question how active uh, an ascii chairman are you going to be you know in the past we have had ascii uh, chairpersons who have been very active there have been people who have been you know also inactive you know i i know it's a it's once again an unfair question to ask you but you you obviously know yourself and you know what you are uh, going to be doing well I, in my life i have never taken on a responsibility that i haven't done with passion number one so it's not about active or inactive i certainly want to be proactive that's that's absolutely uh, 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 there are 24 hours in a day i also have my career responsibilities and my job responsibilities to do can but again it's not about one person you must understand there's a vice chairman there's a fantastic board of very senior people there are terrific secretary at you know a really hard working bunch of people in the secretary at who are working day in day out there is fantastic people in the ccc so it's not about one person uh, but as a chairman if you ask me yes i want to be proactive on a lot of fronts it's not just about taking things the way they are and being happy with it i want to continue the good stuff that have already been put into place but i definitely want to bring in newer issues like i told you about the focus on digital becoming more technological savvy creating faster turnarounds having a better closer relationship between the board and the ccc more interactions more thought leadership more outreach more awareness there are a lot of initiatives and i'm putting together a plan along with manisha who's a new secretary general and we're working on a strategy for the year and perhaps younger people also in the industry from the industry because what's happening is that there are fair uh, am i not young you are you are perhaps one of the <laughs> youngest uh, 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 chairpersons who have been there uh, of in of ascii in the recent past but i'm what i'm trying to say is that if you look at the ascii board if you look at uh, the constitution and not just about ascii but about various other industry associations also that exist especially in the advertising and marketing services domain we need a lot of younger talent to come in because that's what constitutes uh, the 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 industry today and that's what is uh, constitutes uh, the industry that the newer forms of advertising that exist so somewhere perhaps they need to be also uh, uh, brought in mainstreamed into uh, uh, the self regulatory fold well in fact if uh, i think it's quite a balance in the board as well i know the perception may be otherwise but uh, 10 years ago when sam balsara approached me to come on to ascii it was with that very purpose that we need more younger people to coming in and taking charge so please come in and join us uh, similarly if you look at the board now you have a lot of people young marketing people young marketing and ceos uh, from top companies there's shagato of marico there's sunil kataria of godrej there is uh, Uh, Madhu from Procter and Gamble, this Priya from uh, uh, Unilever, you know. So a lot of them are having a say, and they are very important people on the board as well. So same thing in the CCC. If you see, there are newer people like Nisha Singhania who have come in, Rachi Goel who have come in, uh, and that's going to be a constant endeavor to bring in fresh thinkers into the system. No, I absolutely agree with you. But but you know what I'm trying to say is that there are no thirty somethings who are there. as part of the think tank in in a in an association like this and not just in this uh, not just in aski but also in other uh, other industry association that perhaps plagues the leadership uh, uh, in 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 our industry well i think i think at the board level one of the criterion of making somebody on the board has always been the person should be the head of a business uh uh and therefore having a certain amount of influence on the company that the person runs right. uh, and a certain level of seniority to come on to the board right uh, which is which is why i mentioned what i did that despite that filter there are a lot of lot more of the younger business heads and the ceos who are now come on to the board right uh, can there be a, a, another a sub board with more younger people from the industry being brought in to create a think tank of course they can be and 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 if it's done i must tell you that that's one good one perhaps the most significant things that you will be able to bring in because clearly self regulation is needed and uh, it it's the order of the day we don't want governments to to come in and police uh, uh, creative expression subhash it'll be 
unfair on myself, unfair for my viewers. I, I'm sure not unfair on you. I don't ask you one or two questions about publicists, uh, BVH publicists. How's how's sure. that doing? How's you know you've taken charge of that, and in terms of um, you know the the entire business that exists there right now, the advertising agency industry has never seen you know if I might use a versa time. Uh, you know, and, and you you took charge of this entire uh, uh, enterprise in, in in July, though you were looking at uh, BBH earlier. Your, your 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 thoughts as to what? How do you ensure that you uh, you are uh, you know big and effective and uh, keep doing great creative work? Uh, look, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, the COVID situation this year, 2020, has been a weird year. You know, completely. I don't think. Any amount of experience could have prepared you for this okay. kind of an un unprecedented situation. And uh, not just us, it's not just the advertising industry, it's the clients and marketeers who have also struggled uh, to keep uh, this thing. And, and over the last six months that have happened uh, as, as, as uh, uh, during this lockdown and work from home, and this is something we have now extended even up to December, uh, purely for the people's safety, uh, with concerns for people's safety. Our business is really dependent on our clients' business. You know, we are there to serve the clients, right? And if the client's business gets affected, our business is bound to get affected. It's a very direct correlation. And this year has been, I mean, as an industry, we've been hit badly. Our clients' businesses have been affected. It also depends on the kind of mix of clients that you have. Imagine if my business was, let's say, largely dependent on hospitality and travel and automotive and real estate as a, as a, as a question. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, you know, it would have practically closed down, right? But luckily you, as, an, as, as a large advertising agency, you have a balance of businesses. So you have FMCG, you may have an e-commerce client that's still doing well in these times, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got to balance it out. But overall, yes, I mean, the business has been hit very badly this year, uh, which has, you know, made a lot of our CEOs in the business have to take very strong measures uh, some saw it coming much earlier and therefore those measures were taken earlier in terms of cost control, et cetera, et cetera. But business has certainly been hit. But I'm also the eternal optimist. <laughs> I know that this will pass. When it will pass, whether it's by December, whether it's by next June, I don't know. Nobody can answer that question. But I know that this will, be, this will pass and I know that the time will come to rebuild again. And you've got to have that positive outlook. You know, otherwise we'll just be sitting and doing doomsday uh, statements, right? So we will build again. We will build again. You know, given the environment that is there and one uh, is obviously looking for the good times to come, I'm sure the, the uh, you know, wanted yesterday should be wanted tomorrow for you, right? So, oh, yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate that, you know, because of this lockdown as a band, we can't perform right now. But uh, some of us are actually doing a lot of music from home. We've learned the art of creating music and performing individually from our homes and then using digital to bring it all together. So we are writing and we are composing songs. It's just that, you know, because of the current situation as a band, we can't perform together in life, in a live situation. We don't have that option right now. No but yeah, music is very much on the cards. <laughs> so. for, my, for our viewers and readers here, I must tell you that if you can go to YouTube, figure out Wanted Yesterday and all that, uh, Subhash has been uh, entertaining us with, you, you must enjoy. But Subhash, you know, as, as a member of the ASCII CCC, I must tell you that I'm, I'm a very proud member of the ASCII CCC. And, uh, and clearly, you know, being part of the, being part of the uh, uh, print media, I know how ineffective a government controlled uh, uh, regulatory body should be. So clearly there is a, a, a role for a self-regulatory body uh, and, and I, of course, know how the circumstances are. So all that I can do is wish you the very best and hope Thank you. Uh, you succeed and uh, uh, thrive. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.